Hey coders, and welcome to episode two of our Pandas playlist. In the last episode, we learned how to load data into our Python script. Now, in this video, we're going to be learning how to access the rows, columns, and cells of that data. So again, in this video, we'll learn basically bracket notation. So just like how you would access, say, certain elements of a list, uh, you can also use bracket notation to access certain, say, columns, rows, or cells of a data frame or a data series. Uh, however, you do get a little bit more functionality in these methods, iloc, loc, iat, and at, so we're going to be looking at those as well. So without any further ado, let's jump on and over to the code. Back in my Jupyter Lab, and again, I want to emphasize that you don't need to use Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebooks in order to run Pandas. Pandas is a Python package, so it will run um, perfectly fine no matter where you run it, as long as it is a Python environment. So you can run it, say, just in a traditional code editor in VS Code, wherever you want, where Python is installed, and Pandas will work perfectly fine. The only reason why I'm using JupyterLab is just because I think it is better for demonstration purposes. So with that said, let's import Pandas as PD. All right, so now I'm going to read in a CSV. Again, this is where uh, some tabular data is stored right up here on GitHub. Um, so I'm going to read that in, store it as a pandas data frame, and ha let's have a look at it uh, real briefly right now. So it looks like we have a lot of different rows which correspond to different students. Uh, and then we have a bunch of uh, other data. Looks like they took some tests. And then now they have scores from that test and also maybe like what college they went to and all these other fun fields right here. So let's try to access um, just a single column from this data frame. So the reason why you would want to do this maybe is let's say that you want to do some analysis on a single column. Let's say that you want to get maybe the average math score uh, that was in your data frame right here. So you would just want to look at this column right here and then run some you know average calculation on it right so how could we get this uh this single column by itself well you would need to access that column in the data frame by using bracket notation just like how you would right here so this is very similar convention to how you would do it in python as well right let's say that you had some two-dimensional data that was stored in a dictionary well, how would you get just the data of height, right? All the data that corresponded to the height key. All you would do is just pass in height in square brackets to that uh, dictionary, and then that would return for you the list of all of the heights, right? Well, very similarly, in pandas, you just pass in whatever column name you want in between brackets, uh, and then accessing um, the data frame, right? So you'll say data frame or DF, whatever your data frame variable name is. And then you'll pass in between square brackets the name of the column that you want to access. Then that's going to return for you a series object, right? So Pandas is going to automatically convert this column into a one-dimensional uh, series object. And then if we run this, then there we go. So that looks like it returned for us the telephone of all of our rows, right, in a series object. Cool, so another way you can do this, uh, I think it's less common, but it's perfectly acceptable alternative, is to use what's known as dot notation. So instead of just saying df and then in square brackets telephone surrounded by quotes, what I could have done is just send, is just say df dot telephone. And if I run this, it's going to return for me that same series object. So that is just, again, a, another way of doing uh, accessing a single column. However, I, I think it's less com common just because uh, if you do decide to go with dot notation, your column name cannot contain spaces or special characters. So let's say that you wanted to access this column right here, math score. As you can see, there is a space in between math and score. So if you're trying to use dot notation, you can't just say like math space score, right? That's not going to uh, compile with Python. Like Python's not going to understand what this means, uh, df.math space score. Uh, and you also can't like just say this either. 
uh, pandas is not going to recognize this. So whenever you have like any special characters or spaces or anything like that, uh, you're going to have to use bracket notation. So uh, just, just for quickness um, or just for ease, I always use bracket notation uh, to access columns. Cool, so that is how to access a single column. Now, how would you access multiple columns? Well, the syntax is very uh, is like very similar. Um, you would still use bracket notation, but instead of just passing in the column name as a scalar, as a string, you now pass in a list of all of the column names that you want to access. So again, don't be confused by this, don't be fooled. Uh, this is not like some special syntax for double square brackets. Uh, really, it's just a list that's within the square brackets, right? So if I go ahead and run this, then here we go, we are getting now a data frame, which is a subset of our original data frame, right? And that is just the column names, math score, reading score, and writing score. Cool, so that is how to access multiple columns. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use uh, dot notation when you're trying to access multiple columns. So you can't do something like this. That's not going to compile. Uh, we're going to get a syntax error. Um, so we're going to have to then uh, use bracket notation just like that. Cool, so that's how to access uh, columns. Now, how do we access specific rows? Let's say that we wanted to get, say, just a I don't know, just one of these rows, let's say like row four, right? We just wanted to look at this specific student's data just like this. How could we access that? Well, there are two separate methods for that, iloc and loc. All right, cool. So iloc is accessing rows by position. So what this means is that uh, when, when we say like df.iloc and then in square brackets put the number four, then that is going to go and get the row in position four. So let me run this. All right, so again, this got the row in position four, and then it returned for me now a series object. Again, this row right here, four, uh, this is just one dimensional data, so Pandas is going to convert that into a series object. Now I want you to get the distinction between uh, iloc and loc down. So with iloc, iloc stands for index location, right? So this is done by position. So basically where positionally is this row? And we are saying that it is the fourth row. However, location or just dot loc is going to go and get a row by name, right? So if we were to say df.loc32, that's going to work, but um, the reason why that works is because indexes, all of these are our index names, and there is a index with the name of 32. However, if we were to change that index name, let's uh, let's just write one more additional optional argument right here. Let's say index call is equal to student ID, say. Um, actually, for more emphasis, let me use telephone. And this basically what that means is now we are going to be using our telephone column as our index. So now all of these rows have names and we are using the telephone as the name of that row, right? So now telephone is no longer a actual um, column, it is now our index column. So now let's say that we wanted to get say this row. Well, we could say dot iloc of two, right? Zero, one, two, or we could just say dot loc and grab this telephone, which is the index, and pass that in right here as a string now, because this, this column is uh, full of strings. And if we run that, then there we go. Now we have that student ID of uh, two and all of the data that corresponds to this index name right there. Cool, so that is dot iloc and dot loc for accessing rows, but you can also use these two methods for accessing rows and columns, right? So if we wanted to get a specific piece of data, uh, let's say that we wanted to get like, you know, one of these datas uh, or one of these pieces of data, say like this piece of data or maybe like this piece of data, then we would use dot loc and dot iloc, uh, but instead of just passing in the row, that we wanted to access, we would, uh, as a second argument, pass in the column that we wanted to access. 
So there are three different ways we can use that. Uh, we can either, if we just want to get a single piece of data, then we would just pass in a scalar, right? We would just say, all right, just you know, one uh, number right here, and then one column, right? So let me actually, it looks like with all of these demonstrations, I'm accessing a student ID. So let me go back and put that as our index column. Cool, so now uh, student ID is now our index column. So if I were to try to get um, the gender, the, the column gender, and then this row right here, then that would return for me just a single piece of data, which is a string, right? This is female. However, if I wanted to get uh, multiple columns and uh, multiple rows, then the way I would do that is to pass in, instead of a scalar, a list, right? Um, so for this second example here, uh, it looks like I am trying to access the rows um, uh, with this 32, 34, and 35 right here. And then the columns I want to access is gender and telephone. So if I run that, then there we go. We now have a data frame uh, with these uh, with these student IDs and then these, um, these column names right here. Cool, so we could either, again, we could use a scalar or a list. However, we can also use a colon, right? So it, you can imagine if we were trying to get all of the all of the rows, then passing in every single row into a list would be, um, you know, it'd be a t big time waster. So what we could do instead is just to get a slice um, of certain rows or columns, right? So if I run this, just passing in a single colon with no nothing preceding it and nothing after it, nothing following it, that's going to get every single row. Um, and if you put something uh, preceding it, then what that means is it's going to get that uh, that piece of data. So for this, this is the columns to access. So it's going to get the lunch column. And then everything uh, following that is going to be returned as well because it says lunch, colon, and then there's nothing that follows it. If I were to say, um, let's just say uh, writing score, let's say I didn't really care about telephone or college ID. Now I were to pass that in, then there we go, now it's going to get everything from lunch to writing score. So that is how a column or a colon works. Uh, it's going to get a slice of the data. Cool, so that is for loc, and then similarly for iloc, it works the same exact way where we first pass in rows and then columns, uh, and then we could pass in like a single scalar, just like that, if we, want a, if we would just want a one cell. Um, however, if we wanted multiple rows, such as like these and then multiple columns. You can also get columns by their um, by their position, right? So if I run this, then there we go. It, it looks like I'm going to get, be getting these rows right here and then also the columns that correspond to these um, positions right here. Uh, and then finally, we can also use colons for iloc as well. Looks like we're going to be getting row three and then going up to, but not including row seven. Also the same thing works with uh, um, columns. We're going to be getting column two and then all the way up through, but not including column four. So that is one big difference uh, between loc and iloc. Uh, with, colon, with colons in loc, you always get um, everything up to and including the last item right here, right? If we were to run this, uh, we can see that we get writing score with dot loc. However, if you're using dot iloc, that last item is not included. Cool, so that is how to access rows and columns. Um, there's one more thing that I want to share in this episode, and that is a faster way of accessing a single data point. So um, if you just want to access a single cell, such as like what we did up here and also up here, then I would recommend using dot at and dot at dot i at just because it is a tad bit faster and a tad bit uh, better on performance. Um, so if I were to run this cell right here, then it's going to run or it's going to then get the the um, the cell that is in row four and in column two, and apparently that is some college. Uh, let's see if we can verify that. Uh, so this is row or this is row four, and column two is going to be zero one two because student ID again is our index column, so it's not an official column anymore. So this is going to be zero 
one, two, and that is indeed some college. Cool, so th again, I at and I at are only for if you want a single cell. Unfortunately, you cannot add um, like multiple. If I were to try to get this, uh, say right here, then that's not going to work because again, at and I at are only for single cells. Cool, and again, just like how you would say I at is an I loc, this is for index uh, location or index at, and then this is just at at, uh, and this is named right here. All right, so that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next episode.